I have a concern about crit critical theory. Critic, this, this whole, this whole, everything that's <clears throat> happening right now, I believe is a Trojan horse. I believe that that um, that James Lindsay and how he described it as a Trojan horse, he's exactly right on. It's coming into mm -hmm. our churches. Um, do the division that it's causing right now is insane because, like you said, it's another gospel. It's another religion. It's like uh, because once again they have a, their own epistemology. So the way that they discover truth is is from a positional standpoint. So so how do I respond to that? Before you mention the sort of lefty versus conservative uh, demographics that you're dealing with in the church. Um, so as we've watched this culture war just like explode all over the place, I know that all sorts of churches, temples, uh, virtually every organization, secular or not, is dealing with some sort of like internal split over how to deal with everything that's happening these days, literally from coronavirus to Black Lives Matter and everything in between. Uh, yeah. What what version of that are you seeing these days? Yeah, uh, there's definitely a, a political part of of everything. I mean, dude, this is insane. Like, I, it's insane. I keep on telling my friends this. I'm sure that all your friends are just going, "What is, what is happening in 2020?" Um, you know, for there, there's a there's a there's a conversation in the church right now politically about the threshold of um, the threshold of religious liberty versus, um, you know, government needing to, you know, keep it, uh, uh, tabs and, and a lid on coronavirus. Um, and so we're kind of, I guess, exploring that threshold. Um, you know, you got people who, uh, that's, 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 that absolutely fine. It falls along ideological lines, right? So there's, there's, it seems like there's two types of Americans. There's ones that want to, they, they, they have a, a huge trust in the government. My wife is one of them. My wife is an Australian. I'm a Canadian. But my wife is like, she trusts the government. She's just like, they are, you know, they love us. And I want to be, she told me last night, she's like, I want to be nannied. I'm like, my God, woman. Um, <laughs> no, just a, uh, <laughs> I'm like, have you read Good luck history? with all of that. Totally. <laughs> um, so there you got my, my wife, Jasmine, and then you got me. And I'm like the most distrusting uh you know uh person of of government because yeah i you know like they uh who are these angels you know like the old argument who are these angels that are going to make all these right decisions for us so there's that's a huge conversation of the church and that alone dave was tearing us apart right like so you got like pastors like calling up pastors and people calling up people like in the in the faith community just being like you need to trust the government authorities from god and then um and then now you have, of course, uh, you know George Floyd's death, which was horrific and tragic, um, and uh, you have Black Lives Matter, um, the organization um, that's kind of uh, occupied some space in wake of the George Floyd killing, and then Ahmaud Arbery, um, because it it looks um, it looks from social media that young black men are being hunted down and killed. Um, so, so yeah, you have this major space and it's, it, this is another thing that's kind of dividing us right now. It's just like the narrative to believe and, um, and what we ought to do about it. And, and regardless of if you, if you believe the narrative or not, you know, Christians are called to mourn with those who mourn and weep with those who weep. Um, so finding that threshold of going, okay, I, I might not agree with the political narrative, but I'm called to uh, to stand alongside, you know, people who are in my life that regardless of whether or not whether or not I believe that they are their emotions are rooted in any kind of reality. And I'm arguing from, a, you know, if you're a conservative, you know, like I, I, have a, I have a responsibility towards them to love them. You know, like my wife is, is terrified of airplanes. Um, it's not rooted in anything logical at all. Um, but. I'm the one that's stuck pulling the bag and comforting her and getting her Xanax when we're on a flight. And, you know, so there's an element of that. If you're a conservative, uh, that you have a, a responsibility towards the people that you're in community with and you're living life with. And, you know, you know, quoting stats at my wife doesn't help her flight anxiety. 
<laughs> you know, like right. So finding how, that how threshold worried are, is the mess right now. Yeah, how how worried are you though that letting in this sort of different, what I would call a religious belief system, social justice, that once it enters the institution, enters the church, that in many ways it will just it will rot from the inside all of the good things that you've been talking about. I mean, this is what we've sort of seen happen to every secular institution. It's happening to the New York Times, it's happening to the Washington Post, it's happening to Harvard and Princeton and all of our liberal institutions. Um, so I'm sort of fascinated where, with this idea that it could be entering, you know, sort of conservative or religious institutions and that they may not even have the correct defense mechanisms to, to purge it or keep it hey, at bay. Hey, that's exactly what's happening. So it's not necessarily. So for me, I've tried to dance this line where, like, you know, the idea of Black Lives Matter is like, it's an idea, it's a saying. I've, I've sort of di divorced it from the organization. Um, they don't like that, but I've divorced it from the organization because, you know, yeah, Black Lives do matter. And so if there are instances of where, you know, there's police brutality that, doesn't seem to fit, you know, the rest of it. I mean, you know, as, if, as we as we examine the data, that's one of the big ones. We know that, that you know, the uh, Harvard Rollins, um, uh, his paper, and we know like the study that was done. Uh, Heather McDonald obviously lays this all out. But one of the mm -hmm. things that I have a giant question mark over is the, the police brutality part. Um, I don't know if we're nailing that, you know, well. And so uh, let's say that you're like me where you're going, Okay, the, the shooting part, you know, there's no, there's no racial bias that's been detected by three major studies. Um, but police brutality, do you have a question on that? Like, why are 30% of blacks being, you know, accused of resisting arrest? Are they resisting arrest? Is that what's happening? Or are the police, you know, being um, antagonistic uh, towards them or whatever? So so let's let's just say, for example, that there is some antagonism that needs to be dialed back. <clears throat> Um, so I stand with my brother who feels he's, he's terrified. Okay. And he's, and he's like, Nate, you know, like, I just feel like black lives matter. Okay, man, black lives matter. Okay. I'm with you. Black lives, like I'll say that now the organization, <laughs> they believe in the denuclearization of the family, which is doing yeah. nobody a service, particularly the black community in America. Right. So, um, so, so for me, obviously I have, some fatter theological concerns to fry, um, but I'm walking this line where I'm in community with 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 my black uh, brothers and sisters, and so um, so for me, like once again, I, I have a concern about crit critical theory. Critic this this whole this whole everything that's <clears throat> happening right now. I believe is a Trojan horse. I believe that that um, that. James Lindsay and how he described it as a Trojan horse, he's exactly right on. It's coming into mm -hmm. our churches. Um, dude, the division that it's causing right now is insane because like you said, it's another gospel, it's another religion. It's like, uh, because once again, they have a, their own epistemology. So the way that they discover truth is is from a positional standpoint. So so how do I respond to that? It's, 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 it's almost an impossible dance, but I have to show rational, Compassion, not empathy, because empathy uh, is, you know, as, as we've seen in the last like 10, 15 years in psychology, it's dangerous and your biases come into empathy. I have to have what's called rational compassion. So I have to reasonably move through the data, move through the things that are happening using my Christian worldview and, frame, and framework and my epistemology, you know, and. Go, and then as I'm checking these these movements and going, okay, these are their demands, right? Because everything has a demand. We demand that, you know, that you overhaul, uh, you know, James says, you know, you can't tear down the master's house, the master's tools. So we have to completely change how we structure, not, not, not just way, the way we structure our church organization, but we also demand that, like, the way that you go about finding truth changes as well. And so at that point, um, for me, I, I'm not going to fight peripherals. Like in any good argument, you always argue first principles. You don't argue peripherals. And so for me, when it comes to the Black Lives Matter movement, when it comes to the things that are happening on the streets and the protests, et cetera, I, I'm not going to 
there are some things I think that are peripheral, and as conservatives, we get a little bit sidetracked by. And so to me, the critical theory thing, and this is why I think James Lindsay um, is just so on the money right now, is because it's the you, you don't go after the fruit, you go after the root. And to me, critical theory is the root of this giant problem. It's the, it's the reason why the, the political narrative has been spun the way it is. And so to me, that's, that's what I'm going after while holding the hand of people that are hurting. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about spirituality instead of nonstop yelling, check out our spirituality playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out our full episode playlist. They're all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.